Hi everyone. It is sometimes amazing to me when I think about it and reviewing and reading the lives of so many of the Orthodox Saints, how in their day someone was completely venerated by many, many people and may have worked many, many miracles, and yet today we hardly even know of their names. This often happens uh, with some of the saints of Western Orthodoxy that have been neglected uh, by the current Roman Catholic Church today. They don't pay much attention to some of these anymore. Well, there is one such saint that is commemorated on July 2nd who reposed in the year 570. Her name is Monagunda, and she was someone who was from the city of Chartres and is someone who had married and, by the blessings of God, was given two daughters whom she loved dearly. She was full of joy and zest for life and completely lived for her family. Well, as the course of nature sometimes does, and especially in those days, Monagunda lost both of her daughters. This caused her to be quite distraught. She would not be comforted. She lost that zest for life and went into weeping and wailing and would not see or be comforted by any of her family or even her husband. But after a time of this period of mourning, she came to her senses and realized that, as Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. So she removed her garments of mourning and she created a small cell for herself near the home where she lived and began living an ascetic's life basically a, a life of deprivation and great interior disposition where she sought the salvation of her soul and to become better acquainted with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this went on for a while and in fact she had one young girl who was accustomed to bringing her water which evidently was not readily available in her area and flour and so she would make bread and that's how Monagunda existed. Well, after a while, this young girl decided that she could do much better elsewhere with someone who was not such an ascetic and had great abundance in things. And so she left Monagunda, leaving her essentially stranded without food and water. This went on for about five days, at which time there was a great snowstorm outside, and Monagunda was able to collect the snow in order to get the water that she could make mix with her flour and thereby go on living. A short time after that, there was even a, a small orchard that was cultivated where she could sustain herself by this means. She wore very rugged clothing. She spent her nights and days in prayer, begging the Lord to have mercy on her sinful self. After a while, she even decided to head towards the tomb of St. Martin of Tours, who was, of course, a very, very famous saint. And on her way, she encountered several people who somehow, knowing through the will of the Lord that she was a holy person, that they asked her for mercy and prayer and healing. One person came and was completely deaf. Monaguda, not feeling herself worthy to do anything for this person except pray, fell down on, on her face, begged the Lord for this particular man, and he, re, he rest, uh, had his hearing restored almost instantaneously. Another time there was a woman who had a very serious infection with great pustules on her body. And Monaguda did the same thing, and the pustules burst open and saved the woman's life. Well, it's very interesting that Monaguda 
had not spent years in ascetical exercises or great devotion, but only a short time. But even in that small time, the Lord saw that there was some special spirit within her, and he desired to cultivate the garden of her heart. She reached the tomb of St. Martin and was living happily there when her husband came and found her and brought her back. So she was again in the little cell near her husband's uh, house, but as time had it, she took off again, feeling that she was unworthy of being with her family or even with her husband anymore, considering all that had happened to them. So she returned to the nearby site of where St. Martin's grave was and gathered a few nuns around her and continued to live on working many, many miracles and became a great wonder worker in the area. She would take leaves and put saliva all over the leaves and take them and place them on someone's body where they had some injury or some affected part and this person would become healed quickly. She was able to rid the possessed of their demon possession. No sooner had they crossed the threshold into her cell that they were relieved of this affliction also. In the end, the sisters asked that she would take some bread and some oil, some salt, and bless it so that they might have a remembrance of her after her death. And indeed, this is what happened. After her repose, that these items were greatly coveted by many of the sick and ailing in the area who would come to her and seek of a great blessing, perhaps almost drawn in the first place by the relics of St. Martin if they had a double blessing when they encountered Monagunda. So this is a very interesting story for us. Her relics still uh, reside in the area near St. Martin's grave. And it's imperative for us in this day and age, when we hear of such stories, to renew her memory in our hearts, to say a prayer to her, to ask for her blessing and intercession before our Lord, because it was clear that he had granted this to her while she was alive and for many years after her death. There are many such saints as these, not necessarily ones who spent years in ascetical undertakings before they became saintly, or ones who were confessors, or martyrs, or passion bearers, or any of the other categories of saints that we know, but simply someone who was devout, who loved the Lord, and because of this, His grace enabled her to become a wonder worker. Bye-bye.